Hello. Hi there. How are you both? Good. Hey, how are you? Oh, same time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful to be here sharing the screen with you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, yes, we're here with, with our friend and colleague and financial aid expert, Margaret. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm Margaret Mann and I've been at Santa Rosa Junior College uh, for over 20 years. Uh, I love it. It's a beautiful place to be. I have uh, the job of a lifetime. I get to work with students and parents and help them apply for financial aid. Oftentimes money is what keeps students be from being able to complete their education and make a good living. And, uh, and I don't want any sort of uh, finances to be a barrier. And I don't want any bureaucratic processes to be a problem that keeps students from accomplishing their goals, both personal and professional. You are a real student advocate. Yes, yes. I, I mean, we all, win, we all witness it every day where you're always there to help out our students or even ease them into the process or with any questions and even parents. You know, I have been firsthand watching you where parents are either scared to give information <laughs> and you find a way to just calm them down and then feel comfortable to share that information. Oh, well, thank you. I, I do consider myself a student advocate and, um, and also sort of a translator. Financial aid can be a bit of a foreign language. It can yeah. be daunting. And, uh, and it's all about cutting through the red tape and getting people uh, to the assistance that they need to be successful in their education. So it's, so it's one of the great facets of my job is that I get to go out into the community and help students and parents apply for financial aid at Cash for College Nights. Um, that cycle is starting right up. It's starting, well, now, basically, uh, October 1st. We're gonna have a bunch of different workshops to uh, get students a little bit of information in English and Spanish about filling out their applications. Uh, the different kinds of aid that are available and personal assistance is going to be available to help students navigate through that financial aid application. And Drina partners with me on a great many of these events. Yes. And what is October 1st to Margaret? Yeah, what are we <laughs> celebrating? Yeah. yeah, we are celebrating. Matter of fact, I am wearing my I Speak Fasta shirt today uh, in celebration that um, the financial aid applications, both the FAFSA, which is the federal application, uh, the, excuse me, the free application for federal student aid, uh, and the California Green Act application uh, are available for students to complete. The cycle is open now for students who are going to be starting in fall of 23 and attending through 24, uh, through the summer summer of 24. Um, this is the priority time to apply for financial aid. Maximize every possible resource by applying for financial aid during the priority time period, which is October 1st through March 2nd. So right now is a great time. There's a lot of support to help you through it. We've got those Cash for College workshops um, that are offered at high schools across the county, throughout our district. Uh, we also have financial aid application uh, Zoom drop-in hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays during the lunch hour. Uh, we have a welcome center. You can come on in and get financial aid application assistance in person at any time. Uh, and of course, we're here in the financial aid office to yes. help you through it, yeah. And before we know it, that deadline March 2nd comes by so fast without even realizing it. So it's like the sooner the students, all of you out there who are watching, if you are a student, the sooner you get it done, the more opportunity you have, like Margaret's mentioning. And we're all here to assist. We're all here to help. Absolutely. It's really important to get it done early. So you've got a lot of time. If you need to take any follow-up action, I always say apply, follow up, follow through, do it every year. Yeah. And if you get in that habit, things are going to be nice and smooth and easy for you. Um, I recommend file in fall. That's my mantra, file in fall. So get it done before you come back from a holiday break. Mm -hmm. Because once um, spring starts, you can still apply and it'll still be within the priority filing period. But like Lauren was saying, time passes quickly and the next thing you know you look up and go oh my gosh it's spring break and i've missed the priority filing period for financial aid and we want to make sure that you have access to everything we want to give you every available free dollar 
a lot of students and parents actually don't think that they should apply for financial aid. And I really want to encourage everyone, you can't qualify if you don't apply. We don't know what you're going to be eligible for. So, um, you know, first time students attending SRJC, um, first time full time students, regardless of income, if they apply for financial aid, uh, they're a California resident, they do the regular student success steps, they're going to qualify to get their $46 per unit enrollment fees waived for the first two years. And that's regardless of income. If you made a million dollars, that's fine. Cool. <laughs> the JC yeah. is still here for you. It can still be free those first couple of years. And if you're coming right out of high school, then there's a Doyle scholarship on top of that, which can take care of your basic, you know, the basic cost of your um, books. Mm -hmm. And then that'll allow you hopefully to save. So when you go on to the university, um, that you'll have some, you know, your money will go further. Uh, there is help available for you. We want to make sure you access your help. We don't want the application to be what keeps you from getting there, and we don't want any follow-up to keep you from getting there. Mm -hmm. Not with a student, I think it was about a week and a half ago now, and they were eligible for over $6,003 that they didn't get last year because they didn't fill out a form that would have taken them about a minute to do in their pajamas from home. And it broke my heart. So yeah, don't let that be you. Apply, follow up, follow through. Correct. It's the other one. The first step is always the application, but it's always keeping an eye out for those emails, for the follow-ups, because a lot of, sometimes a lot of students, what ends up happening is they think that they just need to fill out the application and don't realize that there may be a follow-up a follow -up process. And I feel like as a department, we're starting to get better with connecting with other departments to mm. give presentations, either if they need to do follow-ups, what steps they need to do. So keep an eye out on our workshops. We are working on creating more workshops um, to keep students, to keep all of you informed, to keep all of our students informed. And that way, you know, if there is additional steps that need to be taken. So I have a non-traditional journey. Um, I hated high school with every inch of my heart. I know I'm not supposed to say it, but it's true. I really didn't like high school. I tested, um, I got the high school proficiency and, um, and my mom said, start junior year and, and see what you can do. And I changed my schedule a few times. And I said, you know what? I can't stand it. I hate this place, please mom. Can I just go to college instead? And she said, yes, get yourself a full load of academic classes over at the JC and I'll sign you out. And I had an hour and a half between high school and college, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, and I didn't know how different high school and college were. I was a very good student in high school. I was not a very good student in college because in high school, I could just rest on my intelligence and be able to do things really efficiently, assignments really efficiently and take tests and, and do great. In college, I didn't have a lot of time in class. So I needed to have some discipline to do some coursework. And I didn't know the difference of, you know, a lot of time out of class and a little time in class. And I didn't do very well. Um, I became overwhelmed and, um, and, I, and I would sign up for the full load. And I'd realize, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be able to finish all of these. And then I would drop pretty deep in the semester so I could successfully finish some of my classes, about half of my classes. And I wish somebody told me that there was a try on period for classes you could drop with an E, you know, without a W as if it wasn't showing up on my history. Um, that would have changed the complexion of my somewhat rugged past here uh, at the JC. I stayed at the JC for a little while um, and, and then I went over to um, to Sonoma State. I, and I got my bachelor's degree in liberal studies because I still hadn't figured out really what I wanted to major in yet or to do. Uh, and it was great and I loved it. And um, it was really, you know, it was interdivisional learning. So things were put together and it was really fascinating and fun. Um, and I did okay there. Um, I got my bachelor's degree, um, but I graduated in a recession, a terrible, terrible recession. And I didn't have a teaching credential to go with my liberal studies degree. And um, honestly, I wasn't able to get a job. I got a job as a bartender. Uh, and so, you know, I, I did some of those kinds of jobs for a while. Um, and then there was a point 
about age 26, I decided, you know what, it's time for me to come back and go back to school and get re-educated. I deserve a better life, right? Because I do, I deserve a better life. I deserved more than a job I hated uh, to make money just to pay the bills, to barely pay the bills. I wanted to have a career. And, um, and so when I was sitting on the couch, I wound up seeing one of those ads for one of those vocational schools. And I went to one of those vocational schools and um, got an associate's degree um, in business. And so with that and all of the skills that went with it, I was able to, to get a job and uh, I wound up working um, for that school um, in financial, in, you know, in the business office. And then they scouted me for financial aid. And um, I was there for about three years after I graduated working with them. And then I came over to the JC and I've been at the JC since, wow, 2001. Yeah, it's been a long time and I've seen the JC change a lot and it's been a great honor to be here and, um, and to see, you know, I, I, I remember a long time ago, someone asked me about what my ideal job looked like and I actually described the job that I'm in right now. This is pretty cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think that's what anyone would It's would amazing. To, yeah. To, to, to yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and like I said, my start as a student was really rocky. But you know, my my associates, you know, doing my first little time here to transfer, I didn't do well. When I got to um, when I got to get my bachelor's degree, I got a 3.0. But when I got my associate's degree, I got a 4.0. I should mention that when I started at the JC way back when I was 16, that a um, at, that the admissions office had asked me if I had applied for financial aid, and I said, "No, I wouldn't qualify," and I just opted myself completely out of the process. And um, and they said, "Well, you might not, you might you can go check it out." And, I, and then I thought to myself, I don't know if I said it out loud, but I thought, "Hey, my parents are paying for it anyway." And now, years later, I realize you know, um, that while I wouldn't have qualified at that time, there certainly was a time in my life where I qualified for financial aid and I did not apply. And, um, and I didn't access resources. So I'm really, you know, I'm all about apply, apply. You, you know, the worst thing that you hear is no. no. And I bet you've heard no before in your life. Yeah. Um, so I really want to encourage people to apply. I did leverage financial aid. I did wind up getting financial aid, um, but it was after I had my bachelor's degree. So I wasn't able to access grants, even though um, I was at that point in time, I was hungry. I was on state assistance. Um, so I was really financially needy. Oh, Lord. Embarrassing. <laughs> and... <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I was really, um, I was financially needy. And, and so, um, you know, once you've got your bachelor's degree, you don't unfortunately have access um, to grants any longer, but I got student loans. I borrowed responsibly. I paid my loans back. They were an amazing investment for me. Yep. Managed to get out of, out of graduating from, uh, you know, with my associate's degree with $8,000 worth of debt. I paid it off in a few years and my earning potential went, it skyrocketed. Yeah. yeah. It, well, I think that's, yeah, oh, sorry, no. I think that's just an important reminder and why I feel like you're such a great advocate for our students because of your own experience, you know? And it's just that what if you would have tried earlier, you know? like, But your what ifs have now become like, let me not let some of our students have that what ifs. And I think that's, that's such an awesome way of doing that and you know paying forward yeah Always. it is it's a it's a huge gift to go from from you know we, we, i was kind of you know low low to moderate income in the beginning and then i got to be really destitute i was you know it, it was literally hungry and, and waiting to get state assistance um, I got a box of food once and I'll tell you white bread and peanut butter and never tasted so good. Blew my mind. I mean, I was so grateful. Um, I wish they had things like our food distribution <laughs> back when I was a student. Um, but, 
but um, but then things got stable for me. I got my student employment job. That's how I started in financial aid. Is I started working for the college, um, and and I worked my way in. And they liked my work ethic and my work, and so they recruited me to work for them. And I never planned on being in financial aid. I just landed here, and it stuck. And um, and I'm so grateful because yeah, I, I've seen what it is to go from you know from not having anything to being able to be comfortable and to know that I've got, you know, I'm gonna be okay when uh, when it's time for me to stop working, that I'll be able to retire and um, and we'll still be able to, um, to have a good life. Yeah, pay all the bills and not stress about it. I think that's really, really important. And the bills have gotten really high right now. So it takes a lot more money than it used to, to be able to um, not have that, that done. Uh, that burden of, am I going to be able to make it through next month? Am I going to be able to make two or through next month? Having some money and savings and retirement, it's, it's a, wow, what a different place. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Margaret, for being vulnerable and sharing and, and setting the example um, for, for all of us, you know, as someone who can be persistent mm -hmm. and share in the knowledge and excitement um, through you know maneuvering through this process yeah. Yeah. it's it's a privilege to to share it with you uh, and to learn together and um in our parting message let's just you know remind our our students october 1st to uh, your FAFSA for 23 24 if you haven't done it yet um file it file it for this year still Mm -hmm. um, you can go to fafsa.gov or dream.ca.gov um, and the applications will be ready and waiting and so will we when you need help. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Cheers, Bye.